dusk on the edge of an English village. To us as human beings, the coming of night marks a time of rest and inactivity. Relying so much on sight, we're at a loss in the darkness. We even call it the dead of night. But for a whole other world of animals, our night is their day. The time when they feed and fight and mate and live out lives which we never see. High in the belfry, the first night animals start to stir. By human standards, bats are upside down creatures. Not only do they hang by their feet, they are active solely during the hours of darkness. They monitor their world with ears, not with eyes. As dusk falls, they take to the wing. On the river nearby, the bird's busy day is drawing to an end. Most birds, like ourselves, rely largely on sight. The church is left to darkness and silence. But there's still light and life in the bar of the black horse. High in the gloom of the old oak sits a silent watcher, a bird alert to the sounds as well as the sights of night, the barn owl. As animals of the day retire, night animals set forth. Like the owl, the pub cat is a hunter. Among the scuttlings, the scrabblings, the scents of night are clues to its prey. Perhaps in the hen house,
At the pub, night is shut out. Above the old storehouse, the baby barn owls sleep. Soon, darkness and hunger will wake them. On the dusty beams, harvestmen fence with spidery legs, scenting each other with their tips. The hedgehog is drawn towards the house to feed. A field, a garden away, its dish of bread and milk is waiting. The tiger moth is still mesmerized by the light of the window. It seems unaware of the danger from a foraging bat. Many tiny creatures are on the move at night. Darkness is their defense. While so many praying eyes and beaks are at rest, they wander safely among the leaves. Beetles are at risk when mating, but less so in the dark. At the end of the silken cord hangs an empty spider, a molted skin. The new spider is soft and vulnerable, but at night only bats are on the wing. Some insects can hear them coming. The lacewing hears and avoids their ultrasonic signals. But for most insects, there is no escape. Long-eared bats circle round a tree, picking them off the foliage and eating them on the wing.
Back in the loft, the owlets await yet another visit from their parent, and another meal for one of them. On the lawn below, another young family is feeding. Baby hedgehogs, just out of the nest, watched over by their mother, until one decides to wander off. The cat's journey of exploration has brought it to the middle of the water meadow. Through the lush jungle of flowers and grasses, the residents note its presence. At night, every sense is needed. With one ear, the rabbit monitors the horse. The other is alert to happenings in the coppice. <whistles> Hazel coppice is the favorite home of the nightingale, and also of a little animal which depends on it for food and nesting places the Dormouse. Winding its way across the meadow, the cat approaches the stream. The water shrew isn't only a night animal, it has periods of busyness throughout the 24 hours.
At the edge of the stream, the water shrew, too, has found a meal, the carcass of a long dead frog. But it's trespassing on the territory of another shrew. While night animals are at their busiest, animals of the day take their rest.
Back in the chicken house, the hens croon quietly in their sleep. scatter, but the fox is young and inexperienced, not sure what to do. The sun rises, the birds of day stir and prepare to sing. For the bats, too, the hard day's night is over. They hang once more high in the clock chamber.
Light has once more asserted its power. The hour of the bat, the owl, the dormouse is past. The time of the day animals has returned. But half of life is darkness, the half we seldom see.